Hey everyone, welcome back. This is part eight of the Mile High series and this is the long awaited episode where I take you into Chuck Rosansky's office, the legendary and iconic owner of the world's largest comic book store, Mile High Comics. Now, as I showed you in the first uh, set of videos, uh, not only does Chuck have the world's largest uh, selection of comic books at his store, over 10 million comic books, but I've also showed you all sorts of other toys and collectibles and vintage items and it's absolutely amazing so if you didn't see those videos make sure you go back and check out uh, the first eight videos in the series but as you've probably gathered so far from uh, watching how chuck operates uh, he does everything on a very big and grand scale so when chuck took me up to his office uh, I should have known that this just wouldn't be your average office, okay? It's a pretty big place. Uh, there's multiple doors that go into multiple locations, and it's basically a big showcase. Now, you could tell from the title what it is that he is mainly showcasing, which is Pueblo Pottery. And you are going to see the world's largest collection of Pueblo Pottery uh, below the large giant size ones. But uh, this is the biggest uh, amount of Pueblo pottery uh, that you will ever see uh, in the world. And he doesn't even have it all out yet. And what's out is just staggering uh, to see. So it is a work in progress. You're going to see uh, in just a few moments. Now, I told you there's multiple rooms up there. So when we walk up the stairs, uh, we're going to go into a room. Now, we're just going to be in the first room for about a minute or so. And there's uh, an overhead fan because it's really big in there. And so they need a lot of circulation of, of air up there. You're going to hear that for about a minute, but after that, just stick with it. Um, it's going to clear up in terms of the audio, and it's going to be much easier to hear things. You can still hear things in that first room, but most of the time we're going to spend in the video is beyond uh, that first room, and there's no overhead fan in there. So uh, just keep that in mind when you, when you get uh, started with the video uh, that that's the case. And so uh, with that being said, let's go and check out the world's largest Pueblo pottery collection that people send others to to go check out and learn and get educated on let's go all right so we're gonna go up to uh chuck's secret office up top this is <laughs> <laughs> not so secret okay this hallway everybody thinks that this hallway is primarily gay themed okay uh -huh. and uh -huh. being a drag queen on some levels that makes sense but actually, there's a double entendre here because it actually ties in with my pottery collecting because on the sides here, um, I have had panels painted and they're sitting upstairs. I just haven't had a chance to mount them yet. But there are going to be um, gigantic abanus, which are these guys right here. Um, they're oh, wow. um, feathered serpents that are deities in uh, the Pueblo cosmology. And uh, I have um, body ink of, that forms a prayer um, that is all uh, Avan used. And the two that are on my arms um, are going to be um, what are going to greet you as you come in. Okay. So they're going to be on, there's going to be one 20 foot tall here, and then there's going to be one 30 foot tall on this side. Oh, wow. And uh, they're way cool. But the, the rainbow is actually the path on which they're traveling. Very nice. More, yeah. Again, with the symbolism, I love all the, the art. And um, you've really taken this place. I mean, it's like, yeah, I remember you saying when you first walked in here for the first time and saw it, you thought this was a great giant palette to paint on, right? Yes. And I am <laughs> literally painting on it. You are. <laughs> So we're about halfway through creating the gallery now, and uh, I've got to stop for a while because now I'm into all my drag queen stuff. Um, I leave tomorrow morning for San Diego. Well, I got here just in time. You did. <laughs> um, we're going to have to shut this because of Kitty, because she loves to come in here, okay. and she's a pain in my butt. Um, so these are um, Pueblo pottery pieces. They're all handmade, and they're from the uh, vast majority of them here are from New Mexico. And uh, there are 19 Pueblo 
nations, and uh, 18 of them are in New Mexico, one is in Arizona, and they have an incredibly diverse and I think interesting uh, form of aesthetic. They do, each Pueblo does different things, and could you, could you just explain for people who know nothing or watch this, they know nothing about Pueblo, just a basic introduction? Well, uh, Pueblo in Spanish means essentially village. And uh, so for anybody who's uh, studied archaeology at all, um, in the American Southwest, there were some cliff dwellings that were, uh, in particular, uh, the one that's really well known is Mesa Verde. That's one of the most popular national parks in the United States. And so at the Mesa Verde cliff dwellings, you had people living there. Um, Mesa Verde, they lived there from about 1300 through almost 1500. And uh, those folks eventually migrated to the Rio Grande River. And when, where they migrated to, they formed villages. And those villages are called Pueblos. Okay. And so, um, the Spanish came in starting in 1540 and uh, essentially enslaved them. And uh, so in 1680, they revolted against the Spanish, which was the first American Revolution. Um, and uh, they killed as many of them as they could and tried to drive them out. But the Spanish came back. And when the Spanish came back under de Vargas in 1692, um, they reconquered the Pueblos, but part of the way they reconquered them was to give them land grants. So they actually received land grants from the crown, the Spanish crown. Right. And in doing that, they formed their own nations in the American Southwest, which are to this day uh, essentially independent countries within the United States. And people don't realize that tribal lands operate under their own judicial system, and that with the exception of murder, um, and maybe kidnapping, I'm not sure. But there are very few crimes that aren't done by the tribal police. Um, in fact, some of these are some of their, their badges. I just picked some of these up the other day. Um, but patches like that are what the uh, tribal police officers wear. If you screw up on a, on a native, um, on native lands, on, on, on a reservation, um, you're under their jurisdiction. Forget what you think, white boy. Okay, you are on their land. You you play by their rules, right. and uh, they can be really harsh. Um, so you can't, um, by any means, assume that that uh, um, you know the cavalry is going to come protect you because they're not. Right. Um, so anyway, there are 19 pueblos, and um, for the longest time. Well, first of all, they tried to eradicate them both through missionaries trying to destroy their social structure and through government agents trying to starve them to death, steal their land. Um, but the Pueblos are incredibly resilient and, and um, have a, 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 a very powerful social structure, and so they were able to survive. One of the ways that they economically survived during the 19... Uh, well, the period from 1900 through 1970 um, was that they created lots and lots of handmade pottery, uh, oftentimes firing it in their backyard. And uh, they consider clay to be the flesh of Mother Earth and a, and a gift that was given to them to help them survive. Uh, so what you see here in these two rooms is about 20% of my pottery. Yeah. And so the actual gallery itself is in the room next door here. There's so much stuff. The gallery has just started, so mostly things are still in boxes. Okay. Um, but we have one section completed so that you can at least get a sense of what it's going to look like when it all gets done. But this entire room will then connect with that outer area. There's, a, there's actually a breezeway that we have closed right now. And so this whole area will um, end up being Pueblo pottery. So, you know, aside from all the comics and everything else I have, um, the, the retail value on my Pueblo pottery is about $5 million. So um, I have um, what? little stashes um, of Stuff. How, how people are going to wonder how you obtained all of this stuff one piece at a time i've been collecting 22 years one piece a day 22 years do the math 
Wow. It's easy. One wow. piece a day. Well, now, where, where would you generally get th things like this? I oh, mean, I just, go everywhere. Just everywhere. Some pieces I got from eBay, some pieces I got at pottery shows, some pieces I bought from the creators themselves. Yeah. Um, some pieces I got at antique shops, some pieces I got at estate sales. How does everybody collect their crap? Right. I mean, everybody does it the yeah. same way. Yeah. I mean, it's, just, it's, it's, it's mind boggling. It's just breathtaking. The whole place is breathtaking, but you know, every time I think, oh, maybe this is, th there's just another room with yeah. more stuff. <laughs> yeah. Well, this is, um, this collection here that I have, and I, and I have to, to preface this with a clear understanding. Um, large museums in the United States um, love big jars like this. Um, because it helps them get donations and, you know, white folks love big. Um, so they end up um, going for the stuff that's big and fancy. I don't like big and fancy. Yeah. I'm a big fan of, of aesthetic. Um, so uh, my friend Gilbert, for example, um, loves doing things that are completely whack, but doing them in, in, in very traditional ways. So if you need a uh, donut with a bite, out of it. Um, <laughs> Gilbert can make you one. Um, if you need a, uh, a pistol, um, he's got one for you here. How about a baseball glove with ball? Okay, nice little baseball. Okay, this is where I say um, using ceramics to express aesthetic from a particular cultural perspective, um, they do what they want to do and it doesn't always fit in to what museum directors are looking for because everybody who knows even a little bit about Pueblo pottery has heard of the black pottery of Marti uh, Maria Martinez. And so I had a lady in here just day before yesterday. First thing she asked me, gosh, you got any Marias? That's what they always ask. Next question, what's your most valuable piece of pottery? I mean, it's like I, I called her from central casting or something for every dumbass question you can ask somebody that is gauche. I even told her, you do realize that question is really gauche. And she was like, what? I mean, it's like, I, sometimes I have a hard time because people don't understand that this is not about the goddamn money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. this is about doing things that are cool. So having said that, my collection of this type of pottery is the largest in the world. It is larger than the Smithsonian. Uh, for Puebla? Yes. Wow. So the Smithsonian has more bigger big jars like this. Um, Thomas Hay, who was an incredibly rich banker in the early 1900s, had a crew of six that went out and pillaged um, native cultures everywhere, um, including in the Northeast, Alaska, everywhere. But he also sent crews down into the Southwest and they grabbed all kinds of cool shit. So um, the Smithsonian eventually inherited the uh, uh, Museum of the American Indian Artifacts, which is about a million artifacts. Um, so they got a better collection of the old stuff. Right. Um, but from 1920 forward, um, I'm the dog. I got it all. Um, they Museums send people here to learn um, because mine is a study collection. But this is only, again, not only about half of it is out right now. I have more flooring here that's waiting to be installed, more showcases that need to be um, renewed. And then these are some of the gigantic panels that are going up, um, which of course are covered in glitter because, well, that's neat. Uh, <laughs> but you can see from um, this one here, um, the scale because that's just one tiny piece of the oh, oven you Oh, okay, there. right. So, wow, those things are gonna look amazing when he puts those up on that side panel when you go up the uh, walls of those uh, rainbow stairs, which are super cool. Um, just incredible. Again, just everything done at scale. And in the next video, the final video, I'm gonna ask Chuck about this, about why he does things uh, to such a large scale like this. And I think his answer is gonna be interesting to a lot of people and motivating. And that's gonna be the last part of the series. The last video is coming up soon. Uh, that is going to be really uh, what I hope to be a motivational and inspiring video on, on many levels. And it really, I've envisioned this, uh, I've almost feel like a movie producer creating this series and how I've kind of just decided to structure it. And I really uh, have envisioned ending it off on this last 
part at the uh, at the next video that we're going to do. So stay tuned for that. I hope that this video was interesting to you in terms of learning about Pueblo pottery. This is not something that I really knew anything about. And so uh, hearing Chuck give that history lesson was was very interesting. Remember, he got a lot of pe uh, pieces uh, there that were from eBay and from estate sales. So this could be something that you may be uh, interested in in terms of getting into and learning a little bit more about in terms of either starting your own collection or also uh, doing some reselling in that area. So uh, if you have uh, some knowledge in that area, feel free to drop some comments uh, down below and let us know what your experience has been like uh, uh, buying and trading or buying and or trading in that area. But uh, with that being said, I'm going to wrap up the video for now. Remember, uh, stay tuned for that final one coming up soon. And uh, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the like button. Make sure you subscribe. Uh, make sure you come to my Facebook group, the Facebook Reselling Resource Center, and follow me on Instagram. That's at prime underscore time underscore treasure. I'll see you back the next video, everyone. Take care.